for me, I've been up to a bunch. Uh, let's see at work. I am. I, it's not really that relevant, but I. I mean, I'm. I'm learning how to make sausages. That is my new thing at work. I a make all of the sausages for the, the uh, store. I calculated how much. About how many sausages I made on Monday. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Um, I believe it was over 300 sausages I made on on uh, actual links uh, on Monday, which is when I make sausages. And and we, we make a, a large variety of sausages. I think it was I made eight different types of sausages, 300 total around, which nice. is good news. I mean, good work. Good. Uh, it, it is a lot more finesse than jesus sorry about that uh that won't come up in the audio recording anyways uh it is a lot more finesse than you might think um when you have to make 300 sausages <laughs> it's a lot of work and um we are lucky in our butcher shop we have we don't use a hand crank sausage press we use um a foot powered electric piston sausage press that comes it pushes sausage up as opposed to the hand crank which pushes it down and then through mm. a tube and we also use natural casing which is it's like i don't know it's kind of nasty it smells Does it so smell bad. terrible it's yeah that's horrible. what i was gonna say uh especially the beef one we make a morcia which is a a pork blood sausage um and we use a beef beef middles in order to stop uh make it i mean the whole point of the the butcher shop is that we were like a sustainable business so that's why we use the the uh natural intestines i think we we source from um syracuse actually i think there's a sausage oh. company that they use they uh sell casings is that syracuse. like gianelli i think it's syracuse sausage company i'm not sure something we we source something from syracuse i can't All i right. have to figure out what it is um and then and so the beef the beef middles are the worst they smell horrible it, it's just like this gets on my hands and it's like uh oh, <laughs> gross uh on top of that it's it is messy to make sausages on the level that i'm making it's it's a lot you gotta emulsify the meat properly. You gotta, you gotta spices everywhere. It's like, oh my god. We made. I wanted to tell you specifically. We made a borscht sausage. I'll send you a picture after the podcast, which is really cool. We had a bunch of beets left over. This is essentially learning how the sausage is made. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was gonna say there's a the reason podcast. that the saying exists. Look, I mean, sausages are great, and they don't have to be like an industrialized disgusting process as you might think of it as it's not that disgusting it's just seasoned ground meat in a casing which half the time i don't even cook it in the casing i take it out of the casing so because i make a pasta with a sausage um but it's just seasoned ground meat but our our borscht sausage had we had a bunch of beets um, and it's a really and sausage is a really great way to utilize ground uh, the the part of the animal that you would end up sending to grind anyways. So it's really valuable for a butcher shop, a whole animal butcher shop in particular, to make sausages. Uh, so that's why we do. But Fair enough. I just bought sausage for the first time in a long time at home. Mm -hmm. In fact, I love a good sausage. So no, this story I... is really up there for me. <laughs> Uh, but we did. We ended up buying. We we also sell produce at our store, so we we couldn't sell the beets for one reason. I guess because you can't sell beets to the area that I work in and uh, the people in the area that I work in. And um, so we we have a borscht sausage re recipe. So we I made this beet puree, and you know I mix in with some pork, and it's a beautiful color. It's it's this vibrant um because it, it gets diluted by the pork it's like a vibrant light purple it's really cool that's cool I'll, I'll send you a picture of it 
we they have you people really did like it sorry have you cooked with it Does i it haven't maintained the yet. color when cooked That's no it turns a little more brown uh i know that and we also put dill in it and and things that you would find in as you in should with borscht yes it was great uh, people any, really like it eastern so. european dish probably needs dill <laughs> exactly um and then the other thing that i learned at work is how to break down a lamb which is really cool so because we get our lambs in whole as an animal minus the stomach and lungs mm -hmm. and no it has everything else it's pretty cool <laughs> actually <laughs> stomach and lungs and intestines obviously um so it's it's actually very satisfying to because we get the the head in it's still attached we sell the neck we sell the shoulder we sell the legs shank ribs uh obviously rack you of sell whole saddles uh we can yeah we we what we do with that is um we break it into the loin and we use the the flap which is the belly uh we we use that for grind really because it's kind of hard. It's like there's a tiny lamb flank steak on there. And it's like, that's so sad. It's so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> and every now and then, the lamb will have an intact lamb hanger steak, which is kind of cool. It's it's very small. It's like maybe in two inches long. It's kind of cool. Oh, uh, but it, it's, it's yeah, a satisfying when process. When you compare those two to, to beef, like the hanger steak that you get from beef or whatever. It's... Right. The beef hanger steak is... Yeah, it's still a small steak, but it's it is much larger. Uh, but it's cool to compare the the animals are essentially the same. Uh, they have all the same muscles. It's just much smaller on a much smaller scale. But it is very satisfying to just completely break down this animal on the table with a saw and and my knife and uh, then just package it away. We can put it in the case. It's cool. <laughs> 